So quickly just going to run through those settings again. So I've defined the tricopter. I have basically left the throttle settings where they are, but I have changed to I2C speed, 400,000. I have defined the internal I2C pull-ups. I have gone to the Sirius GPS board. By going to the GPS version of the board, I haven't had to go to the DEF H and change anything there. I have reversed the yaw for my tricopter and set 1100 and 1900 as my constraints. Only have to do that for the tricopter. For every other kind of airframe, your direction remains one, not minus one. Okay, I have set up, I've defined servo tilt. I've changed the proportion to suit the servo I've got on my gimbal. And I've disabled myself the OX3 and the OX4 overrides on the gimbal. Handy feature, but I just don't use it. So that's what I've done. Okay. I've then gone down and I've set the serial sum input because that's what I use. If you're using a normal receiver, you would leave that commented. Okay, I've uncommented to find A0 and A1 to pin hex, um, pin hex, motors five and six. Don't need that on the tricopter, don't even need it on a quadcopter, but most of the hexes are up will use that so I just tend to do it so it's already done and leave it done um, in my code for when I'm doing different airframes. Okay, haven't played with serial ports. I've set my low pass filter, define ITG 3200 low pass filter at 42 hertz. I have not changed the define AP mode 40. I've left the fail safe off because I do it from my receiver. And what I do in my receiver is I set the fail safes basically so I am in uh, angle mode with mags, mag on, barometer on, and return to home set. So worst case scenario, it's going to start heading back to me. Um, if you regain signal, that'll drop out. Um, if you don't, it'll end up somewhere over where you took off and hovering until the battery runs flat. Not great for the battery, but hey, it should just slowly descend eventually and you've got your uh, airframe back and preferably your camera. That's the expensive thing to lose. I have defined I2C GPS. I have turned off the flasher. Defined GPS LED indicator because it just an, I find it annoying. You may wish to use it. Uh, I have set my magnetic declination. I've covered that in a previous video. The rest of the settings are in the GPS I have left as default. Down here in the LCD OLED, I have defined the OLED. I've left the serial port. I've suppressed logo. I have defined LCD configuration. I've defined LCD telemetry. I've changed the LCD steps to 034, which is the default settings for the multi wecopter OLED. And I have then gone through and suppressed the rest of the telemetry pages that I don't need. So the only pages left commented are 3 and 4. That's per that number there. Okay, by the way, that number also always has to have a zero at the front. Okay haven't played with anything further down until we get to I've left fast throttle change for altitude hold I've left the board name at default I have uncommented define motor stop because I like my motors to be stopped at zero throttle that's what that does then by the way if you do want your motors to run at minimum throttle the way you set how fast they run it at, um, min, at zero throttle is the min throttle command right back up at the top. I've left servos at 50 hertz. I haven't played with diagnostics, ESC calibration or regression testing. I have saved it. 
and I have verified it. And there we have my verified code. Now, a quick look at the new GUI. New GUI has a couple of new features. It's got this artificial horizon display here. Um, this is all changed. This is all new and works very nicely. Got to say, this is a nice bit of graphics over here just to tell you where stuff is. Just to note, none of the matrix, none of your channel indicators, none of that stuff works until you actually connect to the airframe. This is a universal GUI. It will actually tell you what version of software you're running. Um, I believe it's backward compatible. I have used the beta of this uh, on version 2.1 and it worked so it will I believe it will work a couple of interesting things you actually have multiple settings available so you can actually have I think it's up to three or four presets of code available if you want to run that feature you need to actually define it and it is find it now multiple configuration profiles so if you allow that if you enable that what that means is on the GUI you can have different selectable preset modes so if you want different PID set depending on whether you've got a camera on or not, you're not running the camera on that day, on the props you may be running that day, the wind levels, anything you want, you can actually set different presets, if you like, flight modes. How you select that is a stick motion. Uh, I haven't played with it, so if you, if you choose to do so, um, read up on it before you use it, but it looks like a nice, f a funky new feature that, um, might get my head around very soon. All right, uh, the reset button in the GUI now does an interesting thing. According to the documentation, it also clears the EEPROM. So before, if we had an EEPROM issue, something wasn't working properly in flight, we would have to use Arduino to clear the EEPROM and then reload the code. Don't need to anymore, according to the documentation. If you've got an EEPROM glitch, double EEPROM glitch, all you have to do is hit the reset, which will reset all the default settings, but it will clear the EEPROM. So you've only really got to play within the GUI to get stuff started again. You don't have to use the Arduino software, which I know a lot of guys didn't like doing, uh, to clear an EEPROM issue. All you have to do now is hit reset. The PIDs have all changed. The numbers are actually different. The ratios within the code have changed. So it's not record that you don't want to reload your old PIDs directly. If you've got PIDs you want to reuse, you have to apply some mathematics to them to reset the numbers. I would suggest with 2.2 that you actually just go through the tuning process yourself. If you've tuned the airframe before and gotten a favorite set of PIDs before, it won't take you long, It'll maybe a pack or two, to work out your new PIDs. As you can see, the switch matrix doesn't show up until you actually um, connect. And it will only show the enabled features. So for instance, if you haven't got the cam stab enabled or you don't have GPS enabled, you won't get those features show up in the switch matrix. They just won't be there. So you're not going to accidentally, you're not going to think you have a feature and set a switch for it and have it work because the switch just won't be there. It won't enable you to do it. Uh, we have a reconnect button, which I haven't tried yet. But uh, in case you lose comms, but pretty much, other than the appearance, not much has changed here. But that reset function is cool. The select settings and the reconnect button are all new. And as I said, it does actually show which version of software is connected. So um, there you go. See you guys online.